So now just to finish up our discussion on auxins, we'll entitle the next flowchart auxins 2 and just cover a little bit more about these classes of hormones. Now, auxins, of course, function via a phototropic mechanism. So they use phototropism. They grow towards light and use light as sort of a positive or negative source of directional growth. Now, of course, when we think of phototropism, we have to understand that this is simply going to be an event in which the plant is exposed to light. And upon this exposure to light, the light will act as a stimulus. Remember what we said in our first flowchart. We need a stimulus, and once we have that stimulus, we can have a hormonal response which will lead to a physiological response like growth. So what's going to happen is when you have light serving as the stimulus, you're going to have a hormonal response that's going to be an auxin. That auxin will be produced. That's our hormonal response specifically usually at the tip of the plant, at the tip of the shoot. When you have this hormonal response, you will then get a more broad physiological response in the sense that when auxin is produced upon exposure to light, auxin then travels. Okay, It's a chemical messenger. It has to send a message. And it travels laterally, that means from side to side, to the shaded side of the stem. So to the shaded side. Because the light already activated enough auxin on one side. But the other side that is not, let's say, uh, where light is. So if you imagine, let's say, uh, a shoot like this and we have the sun's rays beaming down this way, right? We're going to have tons, and au tons of auxin being produced on this side right here. But what about this side, the one that is shaded? You're going to have this lateral movement of auxin. And then once you have this lateral movement to the shaded side of, let's say, the stem, then what's going to happen is the auxin will move unidirectionally downwards. Specifically, this is going to be the part in which the auxin moves down the stem via a process that's called polar transport. And polar transport simply means that we're going unidirectionally down. We are never going upwards with auxin. Auxin always travels down, and it does travel from side to side if necessary, especially when we have a shaded side of the plant that needs the auxin to be there. So that's basically the broad way that auxin works. We know the specific mechanism, which we established in the prior video. Now we know the broad sort of physiological response and hormonal response, all due to light being a stimulus. Moving forward, auxins do provide us some practical applications to appreciate. And when we think of auxins, we have to understand that there's going to be both synthetic and natural auxins. In the sense that auxins can actually serve as herbicides. Now, anytime you see this side ending, it means it's going to kill. So herb aside means it kills plants. It's, they can actually kill plants, auxins, if synthesized in the you know right manner to kill. They, this is basically because they can cause a, a strong, strong hormonal overdose. Because again, this is a chemical message. But if there's too much of this chemical message, you're going to result the plant, uh, the plant will result in simply death. And this is usually done uh, as a way to kill specific plants that are annoying to farmers or people who work uh, in sort of the crops area because this is going to kill, it's good because it actually kills plants with broad leaves. Now what sense does that make? Think about this. If you have plants that need to get the light from a source, from the sun, right, and they need to grow, and these are crops that are necessary for food production, if you have these broadleaf plants that have these wide and expansive leaves growing left and right all throughout, who are they taking light away from? They're taking light away from the crops that you want to grow, and they might not necessarily have the broad leaves. So you kill the plants with the broad leaves by just overdosing them with a bunch of this auxin that's synthesized as an herb. Herbicide. In addition, auxins are important in fruit development, both in the natural and synthetic sense, as we'll see. Specifically, when fruits are developing, they are the result of a developing seed. And then around that developing seed, remember, there's that ovary structure. That ovary structure will also have auxin within it. When you combine a developing seed with auxin, you are going to immediately, or gradually, I should say, get fruit growth. And that is the basic idea of fruit development via an auxin mechanism.
In addition, if you look at it from the synthetic side, from the applica uh, application side, if you spray a synthetically produced auxin that is available, um, in a certain scenario, it's going to be on these greenhouse tomatoes, tomatoes grown in greenhouses. Usually these are for more commercial use. When you have this synthetic auxin being sprayed on these greenhouse tomatoes, what you get is if without if you don't have the auxin, you actually get pretty poor yield in terms of seeds and thus fruits. What happens is if you if you spray the synthetic auxin because it invol is involved in fruit development naturally, it's actually going to cause for greater fruit development uh, from the subsequent seeds of these growing tomatoes. Why? Well, that's because it naturally works in fruit development and thus it can be applied in a synthetic manner to greenhouse tomatoes. And that's it for auxins.